is our 3D printed electric screwdriver. It's being run off of a 9G servo, which looks like this. And on the inside, it's controlled by an Arduino Nano, which looks like that. Everything is inside the handle here. And if we switch it off, pull out the 5 volt power supply jack and remove the end cap, you can kind of see how everything is just kind of crammed inside there. You can see the power jack there and the inside of the rocker switch right there. And if you can see, if you can see inside there, there's a little tiny circuit board. That's just a rail for all the positive to line up on to go through the rocker switch. You can see here on the top, we've got these two bolts. And in the front, we've got these two bolts. And if we remove all that, we can see what's going on on the inside. Before we do that, you can see there's a 608 ZZ bearing. This is what's keeping all the pressure and force off of the servo, this main drive here. This is taking all of it. Before that, uh, on earlier prototypes, the screwdriver was just kind of hanging off of that. That's no good. So we'll take this off. It's pretty ironic using a hand screwdriver to take apart a powered screwdriver, but you can see the servo there. You can see the cable going around here and underneath the joystick. These bolts are like just barely in there. Okay. All right, so you can see we chopped off the servo arm here on both sides. It lines up to this part here, and this just spins freely in that in that bearing. That keeps all the weight and the force. You know, you you push on this, it it's got, not going to go anywhere because that bearing is inside this housing here. So your servo, these are pretty delicate. If you look inside there, that's all plastic in there. I don't want to mess around with that too much. And if you look here, you can see these these knots here. This is all M3 three millimeter diameter nuts and bolts. There's two, these are friction welded. You could use hot glue or whatever you want. And the bolt goes through these holes into here. That's what holds everything together. There's some more friction welding along the handle because these are printed in halves on the bottom here. And that's that, let's put it back together. that up. If you look under here, you can see this is all designed to fit around the servo. I'm going to make sure that's all clear when we're putting this down. And again, we've got washers on the, we've got washers on these bolts just because uh, they're just a tad, a tad too had too long. I guess we could have made this in the 3D model a little bit higher, but it still works. And then this fits on over here. And if you really want to, there's this pin that's also included in the STL files. And you could put that through there. But uh, I like to leave it like that because, you know, it's strong enough to drive these M3 bolts. And if you over tighten it, this will give and save your servo. The DC back in, flip it on, and let's give it a try. There we go. And if you look real closely, you can see when I'm not touching the joystick, it's still kind of spinning a little bit. And this is something that 9G servos like to do when you convert them to continuous drive. There's a potentiometer inside there, and uh, it seems like it, it doesn't know where zero actually is. So when you go into the Arduino code, you can actually change the coordinates for the joystick and kind of trick it into thinking that dead center here is actually dead center inside the servo, even though the potentiometer is off. And it's trial and error. Just keep changing the numbers. You can see the comments in the code I included in there. I had to change mine to something like 465 for the X value, and it's still a little bit off. And you'll notice that even when you zero it, you might still get some drift after using it a bit. And it's up to you, you know, like some, uh, this, this little bit of drift is okay for me, but maybe it's not okay for you. You can go back in there and change the code inside your Arduino Nano.
This is also included in the STL files. You can slip this one on over here. And this actually accepts any old junky, cheap dollar store jeweler's screwdriver. All the files for our 3D printed electric screwdriver are available for free on Thingiverse. If you've got any questions while you're trying to make this, just drop it down in the comment section, either here under the video or at Thingiverse. Our contact information will be in the video description down below. It's on our website, which is progressth.org. And it's also on Thingiverse. You can contact us that way also. If this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, it would be really cool if you liked it and shared it. That would help us out a lot. And uh, thanks for joining us.